My reproductive organs are intact, yet I have been unable to find a suitable marriage partner. At least one I'm not related to. And we have rules about that. Another TV show based on a computer game franchise. Which way will it go? Will it be great like The Last of Us? Will it be a dud or land somewhere in between? Hi there, it's Micha. If you like to get my take on this, then join me for this review video. In an alternate reality in which all scientific advances after World War II are based on nuclear technology and everything that is designed, including fashion, is influenced by the style of the 1950s, giving this world a retrofuturistic appearance, humanity finally did it. They dropped the bomb. And not just one. In the year 2077, the Great War took place, leaving Earth devastated. While some people were given shelter in so-called vaults, protected from the outside world, the rest had to fend for their lives in a deadly environment. The wastelands. The main plot takes place 200 years later, in 2096. Here we meet our three main characters. First up is Lucy McLean. My name is Lucy McLean, and I'm an active contributor to the well being of my community. A young vault dweller played by Ella Purnell. The purpose of her life and that of her cohabitors is to repopulate Earth once it is safe outside again. If our measurements are correct, the next generation, Lucy and Monty's children, will be able to recolonize. <laughs> However, after her father was kidnapped by outsiders... Where are you taking him? To the real world. You should see it sometime. She ventures out into the real world, realizing that that task is pretty much already done, as the world is plenty populated. Then we have Maximus, portrayed by Aaron Modden, a squire of the Brotherhood of Steel, an organization sworn to track down all remaining artifacts of advanced technology, to lock them away in order to protect the world from further danger. Last up is Cooper Howard, a once famous Hollywood actor played by Walton Goggins, who witnessed the bombs falling in 2077. The fallout has turned him into a ghoul, which prolonged his life but made him dependent on a drug that keeps him from turning feral, which means losing control over his mind and body. He is now a bounty hunter. All three of them are looking for one man, Dr. Ziggy Wilsig, though they are not sure why. Lucy needs him as a bargaining chip to get her father back. Maximus and his knight Titus, a man in a mighty power armor, are tasked to retrieve him, expecting him to carry dangerous technology. And the ghoul, well, is looking for a nice payday. Or you wouldn't happen to be a doctor, would you? Because I happen to be looking for one. As their paths cross, there will be fights, alliances and betrayal. But also a lot of learnings about the true history of the Great War. What will be revealed in the first season? And yes, it is a first season. Season 2 was already greenlit. This Amazon Prime series was doing many things right. The visuals are stunning, the effects convincing and pretty graphic, so be advised. However, those are mostly tongue-in-cheek, as is the whole show, which gives the series a nice ironic touch throughout. The acting is also strong and I'm happy to see the talented Ella Purnell in another leading role, after starring in the quite disappointing Army of the Dead and after her time on the show Yellow Jackets ran out for reasons planned from the start. Also nice that Walter Goggins scored another leading role after his show The Unicorn was cancelled way too early, even though his face is mostly obscured by the makeup to turn him into the ghoul, thankfully offering the occasional flashback of him to the time before the apocalypse. A nice surprise was also the inclusion of a voice I would recognize everywhere. Ready to be of service, madam. As Matt Berry voices the many iterations of service robot Mr. Handy, including one named Snip Snip. Welcome! What the fudge? That got a bit dangerous. 
He even pops up in person as the actor who sold his voice to be used by that company. Well done. Another thing they did well is not just retelling a story from the games, but telling a new story that everyone can enjoy without knowing what happens next. So basically, everyone besides the main trio may be off at any given moment. And some are snuffing it pretty quickly. So don't get used too much to anyone in the supporting cast. You stupid motherfucker, you know this is all your fault. This original story is told while still upholding all the lore and canon from the games, with consistency being guaranteed by bringing on one of the game's directors as an executive producer. It's a new entry, so just like we approach a game where we're gonna tell a new story, put it in a new location, the show does that. My only three points of critique would be that they sometimes rely too much on their visuals, beautiful as they may be, resulting in some scenes running unnecessarily long, occasionally giving the show a bit of a long-winded feeling. Each episode could have easily been shortened by about five minutes without really losing any scenes or plot lines by just tightening the edit. Then there are some scenes where characters act, well, a bit out of character, with the most memorable for me being the ghoul finding a chest full of drugs he needs to prolong his life which he usually inhales, but instead of just taking the whole chest and leave, being set up for life, he takes some vials and puts them in his head and then starts drinking some of them, resulting in him passing out and later being confronted with hostile humans. He was always shown as being in control, being methodical and thoughtful, so that didn't fit and ultimately even the outcome had no effect whatsoever on the main plot. Lastly, there is a love story that basically came out of nowhere, which therefore felt like being shoehorned in. It's not totally out of the question, but maybe it could have been held back for season 2 when the characters actually know each other better. Or just could have been scrapped at all, as not every single show needs a romantic angle. That last point I didn't even feel that strongly about, but recently a friend and dear colleague pointed that out to me and I tend to agree with her. And with that being said, Let's get to the rating. You might have guessed it already. I didn't find many detractors and mostly enjoyed watching the show. There were some nice twists and shocks that will keep you entertained throughout the series. I will for sure watch the next season, which is always a nice indicator for quality. I would say that with a tighter edit, this would have been an 8 out of 10 for sure and hopefully the next season will be. This one did several things already great, so I'm rating it with 7.5 out of 10 points. It is for sure no dud, but also didn't quite reach the same level The Last of Us landed on. At least not in my opinion. In any case, the show will not disappoint you, so give it a try. What about you? Have you checked this show out already or are you planning to do so? Did you play the games and if so, what is your take on the series? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share or subscribe. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. The purpose of her life and that of her cohibitors. Cohabitors. However, after her father was kidna kidnapped, thankfully offering the occasional flashback of him to the time before the apocalypse. To the time before the ap apocalypse. Oh, motherfucker.